Welcome once again to Musings by Damon. Today we're going to take a look at one of the more fun decks in my collection, Riku Copy Stuff. It's easy to go infinite in Commander, and there are a lot of fun ways to do it. However, I find exponential growth to be a lot more fun. Right before COVID shut down the country in 2020, I was fortunate enough to be able to attend Magic Fest New Jersey with my wife. We pulled our prize ticks and got a couple of boxes of Theros Beyond Death, and I was fortunate enough to crack the card I was most interested in, Nyx Bloom Ancient. Nyx Bloom Ancient is a 7-mana 5-5 enchantment creature with Trample. But the part I was most interested in was his other text. If you tap a permanent for mana, it produces three times as much of that mana instead. Which means a forest taps for three green mana, while a soul ring taps for six colorless mana. But as I stated earlier, I want exponential growth. So what could be better than tripling your mana? What if my forest tapped for 243 mana, because I have five Nyx Bloom Ancients on board? And so I started building a Riku copy deck. The deck ended up being an amalgam of a Spellslinger and a Creature Clone deck. Before we get into the deck list, let's keep in mind our checklist. 50 mana sources split between lands and ramp, usually 37 lands and 13 pieces of ramp. 10 pieces of card advantage. 8 to 10 pieces of spot removal. 2 to 3 board wipes. 1 to 2 pieces of graveyard hate. And 1 sudden I win card. So let's take a look at our commander. Riku of Two Reflections is a 5-mana 2-2 Legendary Human Wizard with two triggered abilities. The first says, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, you may pay blue and red. If you do, copy the spell and we may choose new targets for the copy. The second ability says, whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under our control, we may pay green and blue. If we do, we create a token that's a copy of that creature. It's very important to note that copying spells is a cast trigger, while copying non-token creatures is an enter the battlefield trigger. So what are our goals for this deck? We want insane amounts of mana, so ramp is probably going to be a bit heavy. We want to cast big spells, and we want awesome creatures that we can copy. Unfortunately, good creatures are expensive, so this will not be a budget build. However, I was able to keep the deck list under $250. Honestly, you could take the core of this deck and make a Teamer Spellslinger deck, and then slowly build it up by adding the expensive cards down the road if you wanted to. I'll have a link to a cheap Teamer Spellslinger deck posted below. So, what creatures are we trying to copy? We have the aforementioned Nyx Bloom Ancient, as well as our other mana ramping creatures in Goblin Electromancer, Storm Kiln Artist, Sakura Tribe Elder, and Solemn Simulacrum. We also have creatures that help with card advantage in Eternal Witness, Archmage Emeritus, and Muldrifter each of which is amazing when copied. Reclamation Sage serves as copyable spot removal, Adrix and Nev Twincasters gives us an extra token creature, while Fassa Deep Dwelling enables additional copies through Riku via her Flicker ability. Additionally, we have a copy of Spark Double to copy any of our legendary creatures we're running. While we may be tempted to copy Riku, I find it more fun to have a bunch of non-legendary copies of Nidmizzet Baroon or the Locust God. Finally, as a win con enabler, we have Terror of the Peaks. How do you win with a Terror of the Peaks? You kick Rite of Replication, netting you a total of 6 copies of Terror of the Peaks. This totals out to be 125 damage. You could copy Rite of Replication if you really wanted to, but 500 damage tends to be overkill. Regardless of who you decide to copy, Rite of Replication is absolutely your sudden I win card in this deck. We also have other ways to copy creatures outside of our commander. However, with enough mana we can cast these spells, copy them via Riku, and then copy the original creature with Riku as well. To start, we have Mythos of Aluna, Double Major, Quasi-Duplicate, and Repudiate Replicate. Conjurer's Closet serves double duty alongside Thassa Deep Dwelling as synergy with Riku. I mentioned earlier how this ended up being a bit of a Spellslinger deck in addition to a creature copy deck. So what Spellslinger cards are we running? To start, we have Galvanic Iteration, Expansion Explosion, Reverberate, Reiterate, Twinning Staff, Thousand Year Storm, and Rowl Storm Conduit. Remember, with a Rowl Storm Conduit on board, any instant cast by any player, combined with any two of our copy spells, Expansion Explosion, Reverberate, or Reiterate, goes infinite and we win the game. But my personal favorite way to win with this deck is Thousand Year Storm, combined with Mana Morphos and Narset's Reversal. Let me explain how this works for those new to Spellslinger. You cast Mana Morphos and respond with the Narset's Reversal, targeting your own Mana Morphos. 
Thousand Year Storm triggers, creating a copy of Narset's Reversal. That copy then targets the original Narset's Reversal, which you then return to your hand, but this also creates a new copy of Narset's Reversal, which is going to target Manamorphose, creating a copy of Manamorphose and returning the original Manamorphose to your hand. That copy resolves, and you draw one card and add two mana of any combination to your mana pool. You then cast Manamorphose again, creating two more copies of Manamorphose. Those each resolve. You draw two cards and add four mana to your mana pool. Before the original resolves, you cast Narset's Reversal again, making three additional copies of the spell. Repeat until you have enough cards in hand to win the game, but stop before you draw your entire deck. Now, Narset's Reversal is not just a combo piece, it's also part of our interaction package. We also have Negate and Counterspell as our counter magic, as well as a Braid, Hull Breach, Beast Within, Chaos Warp, and the aforementioned Reclamation Sage. For board wipes, we're running Blasphemous Act and Hour of Devastation. Our deck likes to draw a lot of cards, and having a board wipe that can kill Narset Parter of Veils is a good thing. We also have Crackle with Power as either a Win Con or Spot Removal, as well as Comet Storm. For card advantage, we have the previously mentioned Eternal Witness, Archmage Emeritus, Manamorphose, and Muldrifter. But we're also running Growth Spiral, Eureka Moment, Urban Evolution, Frantic Search, Windfall, Pull From Tomorrow, and Blue Sun Zenith. To ensure we're casting as many spells as possible, we went heavy on the ramp package. I've already talked about our creature ramp package in Nyx Bloom Ancient, Storm Kiln Artist, Sakura Tribe Elder, Goblin Electromancer, and Solemn Simulacrum. Added to that are our mana rocks, Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, Gruel Signet, Isn't Signet, and Simic Signet. And for traditional mana ramp that we can copy with our commander or our other Spellslinger cards, we have Cultivate, Kodama's Reach, Three Visits, Farseek, Rampant Growth, Nature's War, Sky Shroud Claim, Migration Path, and Circuitous Root. Finally, our lands consist of Command Tower, Exotic Orchard, Frontier Bivouac, Ketria Trium, The Guild Gates, The Typed Snow Duels, A Myriad Landscape for Extra Ramp, The Check Lands, Two of the enemy bond lands from Commander Legends, along with a Cinder Glade that can be fetched by our ramp that cares about forests, six forests, eight islands, and six mountains. So let's compare our deck list to our checklist and see how we did. Counting mana sources and ramp, we're at 56. A little heavy, but with what our deck is trying to accomplish, I think that's fine. 11 pieces of card advantage. Again, a little heavy, but we're trying to cast multiple spells a turn, so this isn't too high of a number. Nine pieces of spot removal, right on track. Two board wipes, right where we want to be. No graveyard hate, but we do have our sudden eye win card. So the deck checks all but one of the boxes, which is fine. We aren't trying to completely dominate the board. Teamer can be oppressive to play against, and this deck focuses more on having fun and winning in an interesting manner than trying to completely shut down our opponents. Now let's take a look at some upgrades to make the deck stronger and more in line with the one I'm currently playing. To start, we remove all three guild signets and replace them with cards that let us play more than one land per turn. Secondly, we make room for the bounce lands. Trust me, these upgrades go hand in hand. There is no worse feeling than playing an Azusa Lost but Seeking and only having one more land in your hand. The other big upgrade I'd add is a Walking Ballista. Though you don't want to copy it with Riku, if you have three or four copies of Nyxplume each on board, you can cast a massive one and it will be your win con. Finally, I'd add a Worldly Tutor to be able to find the card this deck is built around, Nyx Bloom Ancient. All in all, this deck is a blast to play. It's got lots of different play lines that can win out of nowhere, but isn't oppressive or annoying to play against. Riku is one of my favorite commanders, and I hope you'll enjoy him as well. Once again, I'd like to give a huge shout out to my editor Cute Stuff. I couldn't make these videos without her. If you'd like to hire her to edit your own videos, there's a link to her Fiverr page below. Please like and subscribe for more content. I post new Commander videos every Monday, or you can click here for more Commander content. Stay safe, and I'll see you all again next time on Musings by Damon.